Hello, everybody out there in YouTube land, and welcome to DC Fans United. So today, it's going to be a fun night. We've got a whole crew of people here, and we're going to be talking about Batman, specifically the anim well, not animated, the live-action movie Batman, uh, Batman 89, Batman Returns, and Batman Forever. And if we have time, we'll get into Batman and Robin as well. So. <laughs> How are you guys doing? All right. How are you guys all doing tonight? Pretty good. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Nice. Right. Well, so this was right after the holidays, man. Like, you know, everyone, I think everyone. Can you guys cool. hear me? Yeah. We hear right. you, Ninja. Uh, of course. Yeah, with the holidays, I'd wanted to do a live stream sooner, and just you know, hadn't really. Most people weren't available around Christmas and stuff, so I was glad to do this one. So this was actually Panels and Borders idea. Nice. Dominic. Uh, so since this was your idea, which movie would you like to start off with? Uh, well, might as well start off with the 89 Batman. All well, right. The first one. Let's so that's order. probably of the four of, the, of those movies. That's my, by far my favorite movie is 89, the original Batman. Yeah. And then they just go downhill from there, and then it's Returns and Forever, and then Batman and Robin. Well, that's, like, almost unwatchable. Okay, no, I want to point out, actually, I prefer Batman and Robin over uh, Forever, and only because it, it commits to the cheesy joke, where Forever is, like, half committing to it. For Batman and Robin just goes full cheese factor. That's why I like about it. <laughs> I, uh, I'll kind of confirm that I like Batman and Robin over Forever. Yeah, I've, so, I've heard that from a number of people. Forever is often ranked as the worst, but Batman and Robin is uh, there's so many cringy moments. But I, I think that's what makes me enjoy it because, like, it, it, it just like it kind of delves itself into the cringe. Like, it's so bad, it's just it makes me laugh. But with it also, like, I mean, I, I also have to choose between uh, Val Kilmer and uh, George Clooney. I think I'm gonna go with George Clooney. <laughs> Uh, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know, man. Val Kilmer was. I, I rewatched all four of those movies before coming on here. Val Kilmer was really wooden. <laughs> yeah, he is yeah. kind of stiff in that one. But, yeah, uh, Michael Keaton was too, though. I, I I found with uh, Batman and Robin, like George Clooney is just he's he's just George Clooney. Like he's not acting; he's just being himself almost. I like Chris O'Donnell. <laughs> I liked him. I thought he was handsome. Oh, uh, he, he's handsome. He's fine. Like Chris O'Donnell, he was a. He was, was he decent. Robin? Yeah, he, he was the Robin. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dear. He literally wanted to showcase like how, how cool he is. He has to like he has to dry his towels by hand drying instead of like put him in the dryer. Like <laughs> that's an actual scene. It's a shame yeah. because Val Kilmer was coming off or, or I don't remember when he did the Saint, but there was a sense that he could do these kinds of films. And it did it forever. He just he felt like he was cast there and he wasn't really sure why he was there. It was a it was an odd role for him. I think I've seen him do better, but it was wooden was the right word. Wooden was the right word for it. Uh, with I, forever, I have more qualms with the Riddler and Two Face, specifically Two Face. Like, why is he always laughing? Like, dude, you're not the Joker. Just dial it back. Yeah. Like, he keeps trying to out Jim Carrey, Jim Carrey, and it's like, what? <laughs> The thing is, I like the okay. So in Forever, I will say one thing I do like is the way I, I do like the chemistry between Jim Carrey and Tommy Lee Jones, though. Uh, like, sans the laughing from like Two Face or sans the Jokerist Jokerness of like Riddler, Jim Carrey and Tommy Lee Jones seem like. Can I just get a movie with those two kind of doing whatever the fuck they want to do? <laughs> Well, uh, me and my girlfriend watched Batman Forever last night, and we were like saying, like, that's the the thing about the Batman Forever is Jim Carrey and like Tommy Lee Jones are way too over the top. Right. Like, that was Jim it's Carrey's like, oh. height of being Jim Carrey, and so he was pulling yeah. all the Jim Carrey stuff for that role. Yeah. So he probably would make a better Riddler now because he'd be way more dialed back than what he was back in that movie. Like. Oh, for sure. For sure. Oh. Oh, yeah. Well, and what gets me is it's Jim Carrey, all right? You expect that. And for the Riddler, he's a pretty quirky character. Like, that would have worked, but J mm -hmm. Tommy Lee Jones should have just played the straight man instead of trying to, like, be crazier than Jim Carrey. Like, it's not going to happen. Yeah, so, he wasn't um, an assistant DA or whatever, right? Or he was yeah, the yeah. DA. Right? Yeah, he so, was. 
At least half the time you should be normal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I gotta think there was so many conflicting directions going into those films. But that piece for you, this is when. Oh, I well, bet you're right. Have you actually? Okay, so I, I was recently watched the interview with uh, with Schumacher in regards to like the movie. He okay, so when he was hired, like hauled in to do the movie, he didn't think he'd be doing Batman Forever. I want to point that out. Like, so Tim Burton's uh, Batman and Robin did not do as well as they'd hoped because during uh, sort of Batman Returns, oh. he didn't do as well as they'd hoped. So. They let him go in the middle of production of Batman Forever because as soon as he was on Returns, he went right to direction of Forever, right? And they let him go partway through it and took on Schumacher. And they and Schumacher's like, oh, okay. Because Schumacher wanted to say, what if I do a prequel to Tim Burns' movies and do my version of Year One? Yeah, yeah, that's right. And they were like, no, we, we want you to do like, we want you to do Tim Burns, but we want you to make it like more toy friendly. Exactly. No, they were getting sponsorships by some of the fast food chains at the time, and they were trying to, to lower it down. Well, I don't know if anyone remembers, but uh, there was a lot of backlash from McDonald's and with the Happy Meal toys and stuff with Batman Returns, because Batman Returns is such a dark movie. Yep. I do. Yes. I was, I was a kid yep. when that happened. I was like, why can't we get the toys? I'm like, oh, it's too dark. <laughs> I had it this, is, I have. though. I just rewatched that movie. Like, even the way it opens is super dark with the penguin as a kid, and he kills the cat, and his parents <laughs> yeah, and his throw parents, him in the. Yeah. Oh, man. Like, there's just... a part where like, he bites off some dude's like nose. It's like really yeah. bloody. No, okay. I, I remember watching that as a child, and I thought Penguin was just the absolute scariest thing. And, and Batman Returns oh, was my yeah. favorite movie out of them all, out of all of them. So, uh, 89 in Returns. Are kind of equal for me because I like a lot of aspects of both of them. And uh, oh, okay, so I love the call. Okay, so you know that part where they walk into the beginning of like Batman 89 and they walk into the like armory room and like all those like armor pieces that like Bruce has bought from all around the world. I love those. Yeah, that's and, a nice scene. That's a cool scene. Yeah, and I feel like I think one or two of them are actually all modules from like another movie that Warner Brother worked on. <laughs> Uh, it's very possible they used to reuse their props all the time. Yeah, um, it also makes me like miss like practical props. I wish movies would use more practical props these days. Uh, yeah, yeah. No. <clears throat> so how how many people here were actually old enough to see Batman '89 originally when it came out in theaters? Nope. Uh, I was only uh, born the year when it was came out. Old so enough, no. Yeah, but uh, I don't remember if we. I don't. Believe we went. I remember us getting it on VHS, and that was like a big thing. No, we didn't um, go to the theater very often back then. I I really liked the costumes. I think some of the costumes looked better than some of the more modern DC movies. I definitely love the Catwoman costume. It's one of my favorite uh, costumes, live action costumes for her. The All Batman right. uh, costume could have been better though. Where it's oh, yeah, those, it been. yeah. So I'm gonna. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna give props to. The okay outside of the nipples, like on the bat suit, I think this. Oh, I think, yeah, like I think <laughs> the designs were much more mainstream, and like the Forever and the Batman and Robin costume, like they were much more used to what you would expect to see in a comic, and like were easy to move around in for the actor. You could tell. Uh, so I think I like the, the Keaton one though, with the yellow emblem on his chest. Yeah, I, I do like the yellow emblem. I want them to keep the yellow emblem. Um, but I, I, I didn't like how like stiff Keaton could feel in that costume half the time. Okay. He uh, looks. He moves awkwardly, especially if he has to throw something or pick something up. Yeah, he yeah. can't move his neck. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in the '89 Batman, it's like his neck is stiff all the time. He can't really turn his head in that suit. Yeah. So he has to turn his whole body when you watch the movie. He has to turn his whole body whenever he's looking around. Yeah. 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 So dramatically. He did. Yeah, I'm sure yeah, it was like, terrible. Well, he. Like, I think. I think he complained about like how sweaty the suit would get, and how he couldn't like move around very much. Uh, but okay. outside of Batman, and and again, you probably want your main character to have the best costume. But I think his villains had some of the best costumes on there. I think uh, they looked really comic accurate while still not looking too over the top. Yeah. One of the movies, as bad as it was, Batman and Robin, I think it got the look for the villains down pretty good. Honestly, I actually kind of enjoy uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger as like a jokey Mister Freeze, like making the ice puns. Yeah. <laughs> 
That was so great. <laughs> like, Arnold, like, you can hate everything about that movie, but you have to admit, at least, like, Arnold was 100%, like, in that role. He looks yeah, really good, too, with the blue skin and stuff. Yeah. Like, you can tell he had a good time with it. <laughs> he was just, like... Uh, I was, like, I was watching... Like, literally, he has, like, all his minions singing, like, ice songs as he's, like, no, you are my minions. You will do as I please. <laughs> <laughs> like... It was All right. To have a campy, I mean, it, it. You look back on it; it's, it's painful to watch at times. There's cringe, but it's also nice to have such a you know, goofy. It was. It was a nice bridge between the old Adam West Batman, what we have today. In that sense, you can watch it from that perspective, and it makes it a lot more enjoyable. I think. I mean, I I, I will gladly take the hate for uh, for like liking Batman Rum for how bad it is because I, I enjoy it for its badness. Like, there's points where I'm like, I want a cringy movie, and that's kind of one of my guilty pleasures for those cringy movies. Uh, that's it's hard for me because I see the movie it could have been like they have the actors and the money and the sets and everything and I just it failed in some ways like Bane being like brain damaged or something like all, all he does is <laughs> he growl. was a mongoloid yeah really well he can drive for some reason he drives poison ivy around but that was not Bane he looked good I mean he they got a, they cast a good guy he was really big and everything but. Bane should be smart, not... I, don't know. I think the problem that that movie had, though, is, like, it was too busy, again, like, trying to sell those toys, right? Like, Schumacher was really brought in to be like, hey, man, can you sell those toys again? And because, like, forever... like Okay, just because, like, Returns didn't do as well as Warner Brothers wanted, and then the other complaints from the parents, but then you have, like, Forever. Forever came out, and Forever was, like, nearly as popular as 89, maybe even more so at that time period. Um... <laughs> Which then, so of course Warner Brothers looks at Schumacher and is like, "Do it again." <laughs> <laughs> do it like, more. Yeah, yeah. And well, it's, I've, yeah, uh, well, I've heard that that uh, Batman Forever actually made more money than Returns. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's true or not. No, it, it is. is. I believe it. It did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Forever, uh, for, like Returns, actually was one of one of the few times Tim Burton didn't actually make like the amount of money he normally does in theaters. Uh, it fell into a little back then. <laughs> it still made a boatload of money, though. Returns. I was it, looking at that earlier. It had like eighty million budget and made almost three hundred million domestic. Which yeah, but as compared to like the first Batman, which made like almost a billion, you're like wow. And that's yeah. in nineteen eighty nine money, <laughs> not in today play money. Yeah. So they look at like they look at uh, Tim and like Tim, you failed us, man. We got to find somebody else. And... <laughs> <laughs> they kind of threw him under the bus on that one, but it was pretty dark. Like, I actually double checked the rating on it when I was rewatching it today. I was like, for real? Like, when um, friggin' uh, Catwoman shows up in Penguin's place and yeah. he says something like, Oh, that's the pussy I'm looking for, or something. <laughs> it was just like, for oh, real? Yeah. Did he did he just say that? Like, damn. Okay, but I, I don't know. That, <laughs> weird time of movies. It, it was. You look back on some of that stuff and it is painful now, but I mean, for so many people, the Batman films were. Your childhood, and and you grew up with that, and then you got older, and you got the Nolan films, and now here we are. But it it it's I, in the place it has. I feel like the I feel like where we are now, that passion that those old movies had is just kind of gone, though. Yeah, like, I agree. It's formulaic now. They're they're running a very clear formula. I mean, Aquaman was good. There's good movies out there. So I mean, I'm not you know dissing that they're taking this stuff with more seriousness. That's cool. Yeah, but there was a there was a spirit and excitement that now it's it's very much calculated to make sure they make a certain percentage of money and you can kind of feel that in the marketing how they put it together. It really well, uh, depends yeah. on yeah. the director too. Like James Wan's just a good director, so they didn't give him as much money to play with as Justice League, and he turned out a better movie. Uh, and that that just shows in the box office. People keep going back and watching it. Oh, for sure. Yeah, well, the big guy, I think the big difference between now and back in the 80s, like when that first Batman movie came out, like there was really nothing for superhero movies. I mean, you had the Chris Reeve movies, and then you had like some bad TV Hulk yeah. movies. But then when that first Batman movie came out, that was like a huge, huge thing. Like, nothing since Adam West, right? Yeah, it's a, yeah, there was nothing. It was a huge event. Whereas today, like there's what, three, four, like how many superhero movies do you have a year now? Like we're almost like to the point where we're completely spoiled when it comes to superhero movies now. Where back then it was nothing. Like when an 89 Batman came out, that was like today's Avengers almost. Like the, that was like, like the Infinity War is the big event movie now. Like that was the big event movie back then was Batman 89. Yep. 
No, hey, if you, know you were a kid like? back then, everybody saw that. Everybody oh, that yeah. loved comics. It, well, you yeah. know, you're talking about the toys. I do remember having several, like more than one Batman from that movie. Like I have they were the a big one. deal back in the day. <laughs> That had the grappling hook in his belt. Oh, so I, I remember uh, that. I never had I it. But, yeah, I was got like, him right here right? hanging on the uh, yeah on my uh, yeah. Lamp. Does anyone remember the one that you could actually like uh, where he actually had like the bat suit where you could actually remove it and put it on like uh, like the Michael? That was in, that was the uh, next movie. The Returns. yeah from, from Returns. Okay. Yep, I had that one too. That one was the yeah. best. You have your right. Michael Keaton action figure. You get Michael Keaton action figure with like a where he's able to wear his bat suit or not, and, and it looked uh, so bad. It did, but like it also had like a Batmobile you could get with it too. Remember correctly? Oh yeah, the '89 Batmobile was nice really Batmobile. Cool. That yeah. was the best Batmobile. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I like the animated series Batmobile, but it's kind of like a reworking of it, right? Like yeah, yeah it's, it's pretty much just the, and they use the same theme. Oh, that was the best part yeah. about the. Mm-hmm. I really Batman like that. animated series that it was basically they just took it and put it back to the comic style and it was just so good. So really all good. of that stuff, the early Batman stuff was so amazing. Actually, they got uh, they got uh, Danny Elfman to do the theme for the Flash series back in that day too. Um, yep. So that's that was like, that's why uh, this, that's why the theme was very similar to the Batman because like I think they originally wanted the Flash to take place in the same universe. The John Wesley Ship series. Yep. yep, it's cool. He's in the new F- Flash and stuff too. Like they yeah, it is. that is cool. Yeah, yeah. The, I like that. I actually have he that old really... series on DVD. What's that, Pope? The the guy the guy we were just talking about looks really plastic though. He just looks really fake. Like in the face, or yeah, just in his face. Just uh, every time I see it, I'm kind of like, okay, he looks plastic. He's been a, he's been around a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's been around. That was a while ago. That Flash series, early '90s, I think. But he's yeah. really buff. I'll give him that. Well, John Wesley Ship was he was yeah. on like Days of Our Lives, I think, before he started doing uh, the Flash. Really? I think some he was on some soap opera before he started doing that show. Yeah, that's so weird. So for superheroes, you, you look for your romance guy, apparently, like mm-hmm. Keaton, you said, and Ship. Yeah, pretty much. I wonder if there's a pattern there. Like, was um, what about Dean Cain? Uh, yeah, and wasn't him not? Oh, I'll yeah, <laughs> Christopher Reeve too. I think. Yeah, well, Christopher Reeve was from a soap. That's where. Yeah, the yeah. <laughs> he was. He cracked the code. And uh, Dean Cain, uh, he did an episode of uh, 90210, and that's how they spotted him for Superman, because he was really popular among the girls, and that's why they got him. <laughs> Looks uh, like um, Perch is like, going to have to head off, so thanks yeah, for stopping by, Perch. I was just here for a short time. It's sad you do just getting going, but I did want to thank you for doing such great shows all year, and, and, and the stuff that you, you put out, and all the people here. I, I really hope that in 2019 we can talk more, and less trill Twitter drama would be nice, and <laughs> Otherwise, I'm gonna go drink as much as I can and cough syrup and whatever else I can get my hands on. Nice. But uh, I wish you guys a really great year and thanks for everything you do. Thanks, bro. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, take care. Take care, guys. <laughs> Bye. Happy holidays, Perch. Have a good one. You can be sure and follow Comic Perch at, at Comic Perch on Twitter. He's awesome. I, will. Dude. <laughs> I know you already do. Oh. Tell, tell the audience. All right, so we ought to come back to Batman, right? We should, we should. So, I mean, like, it is... Who hasn't talked? Let's, uh, Pope, we'll put you on the spot. What's your favorite uh, Batman of the four movies we've been talking Batman about? Batman Returns. Oh, that was fast. Well, who's your favorite character on there? Probably Catwoman? Yeah, I liked the Catwoman in that movie. She is cool. I liked, I liked her, too. Yeah, I liked her design. I thought she was kind of a cool character in it. She can move a lot easier than Batman too. Like, yeah, I was she like, really no wonder can. she's kicking his ass, <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, I thought she was a good. Uh, I thought she's probably one of the better, best Catwomans. But again, that's not saying too much. Well, the '66 Catwoman was pretty cool, like Julie Newmar and what was the other one? Eartha Kitt. Yeah, I, I just, thought they were all right, but yeah, they weren't jumping around and kicking ass. Anybody but ha- ha- uh, Halle Berry. 
Uh, yeah. we kind of forget that happened. <laughs> yeah, I don't even. She did look really good, Edward. She looked really good in her costume. Who did? Oh, Michelle uh, Pfeiffer. Yeah. yeah, I can't even did. try and pronounce her name. It, it'll just uh, be really hard, hard for me. It's all good. Uh, what do you think of the Anne Hathaway, Calvin? I don't like Anne Hathaway. Mm. Um. So I didn't really like her Catwoman. I thought the design was just really, just way too simple to, just didn't really, I don't know. I thought the cat ears were kind of cheap. That, that's fair. That's fair. I, I, I it did feel too cat burglary for me. Yeah, it wasn't like full on Catwoman too, like didn't embrace the cat side of it as much. as. Did she other. even have any cats? I think she did but it was weird like i don't know i just didn't find her cat woman to be too appealing no they really downplayed the cat woman side of it because they never actually call her cat woman in the movie yeah all just about going back and watching like the old uh, older batman movies and something uh but none of the guys that played batman like keaton or uh, val kilmer or clooney like none of them bothered to get in shape like we're now today, like actors, like they really get ripped for the roles when they play a superhero. Like they get like the personal trainers and all that. Back then, yeah. like they didn't just they didn't bother. Like like Keaton just looked like an ordinary guy. Like just like you're, like he didn't look like he was like tough at all until he put on the the armor, rubber armor. But like he just looked like like there was no sense that he was like a tough guy. Nothing like that. You know what I mean? He's pretty short too. Yeah, that and he was pretty short. I remember Sylvester Stallone complaining about the prevalence of padded suits in the late 80s and throughout the 90s. Hmm. And it's like, you know, people like him and Schwarzenegger and stuff would basically kill themselves to get in amazing shape for every movie. And then eventually they just started becoming more comfortable putting padded suits on so that hmm. you can make guys like Michael Keaton look like a <laughs> some kind of muscle bound athlete. I'm looking at you, Shazam. <laughs> Zachary <laughs> Levi got in really good shape. He may Actually, not Zachary it's Levi somewhat padded, but it's it, he yeah. got in really good shape for that. <laughs> yeah, like the the padded suit, the 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 suit is padded, but like if you actually see him outside of the suit, he's actually very like he he's actually very built now. Yeah, uh, I, I think know. that's is, just one of the main things people are th like criticizing that movie for before it even comes out is he's wearing yeah. a padded suit. It's like yeah, but you want him to look superhuman, like. <laughs> He's ridiculous with that thing on.